Rolling Solo, my name is Adam Smith, and this is going to be part two of my Cloud Spire showcase playthrough of the Ignition scenario within the Brawnen faction. And again, we're playing this in a solo capacity. We're going to pick it up exactly where we left it off in the last video, which is the tail end of wave number one. We're currently in the onslaught phase, and we did one run through of the onslaught phase in the last video, and we will continue to run through the onslaught phase until all minions have been removed from the map currently i have ages here as my minion and there's harriers hiding over here between the spires for the heirs so we get to start off this onslaught phase with my characters the brawnen which includes cram and ages so without further ado let's get them on the move so starting off with movement i'm going to have ages here move two spaces along the path as he makes his way around and we're going to have cram go next now i have a couple choices here i do have two movement or up to two movement to use and i don't have have to move either because I have freedom of choice here with the hero so what I could do is I could move just one again what I'm trying to think of is how to get to this landmark without catching any attention from spires and these spires can shoot three away so being here would not be a good idea however being here would be safe so if I go ahead and use two movement and have them go one and then two this way I can still move and still stay out of the way of that extra attack here from a spire. Now I know this one here, my minion is not going to be able to avoid two attacks, which is pretty brutal. This one won't be able to make it as it is four away, but I'm gonna have two attacks going against Aegis. So I really hope his armor holds up. So now we're moving into spires attack. I've got two spires that are taking aim at my one minion right here as he is three away or within three of both of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose which one I want to attack first. I'll go ahead and have the nastiest one attack first. This one has two attack chip upgrades. The one down here only has one. Spires, when they attack, roll attack dice equal to the amount of attack upgrade chips they have underneath of them. If they don't have any, they don't get to attack at all. So this one has two, which means I'll be rolling two attack dice and really hoping that I don't get hit too hard. Now these dice have twos on certain sides, one and can be blank so at worst four is what i could be hit with all right so we got hit with one there which wasn't so bad so what's fantastic about that attack is it did one damage to me but i have armored and armored states that i get to reduce damage dealt to me by one and this is attack damage so i don't take any damage whatsoever from that attack on my minion all right so now the next spire is going to go ahead and make an attack against aegis and it's the high rise this one only has one attack upgrade chip so we'll go ahead and roll one attack die and hope it's not a two because that's the only thing that will manage to get through the armor of Aegis. Oh, I rolled a one, so I am safe as my armor again blocks this attack and the damage it dealt. Meanwhile, over here, we're going to explore with Cram, and Cram's going to reveal this landmark and see what we get. So this is certainly an interesting landmark minion to get. The Rogue Grizzled Oak is six health, of course, if I choose to keep it upright. And it's got some stats there for movement and its attack on the left. And on the right, you'll notice an icon which depicts an actual spire being available to have as an upgrade for free, not costing any source whatsoever as a reward. So if I take this Rogue Grizzled Oak down, the reward is being able to build a spire in this location for no source whatsoever. 
cover. That's a huge plus, especially with those minions coming around the corner. The problem is right now, Cram is not strong enough and nor does he want to sit still for three full rounds of an onslaught phase in order to try to take this thing down and take all the pain it's going to dish out. I'm going to need some reinforcements. So I'm going to choose to actually flip this one back down. At least now I know it's there. The attack phase is pretty straightforward because I'm not going to be able to attack anything. Everything around me, there is nothing revealed that I can possibly attack. So we jump right past that and now we can move over to the heirs. The harriers for the heirs are going to move now and they're going to go four spaces. So from where they currently sit, one, two, three, and land here for four. Spires will fire if I have any to actually take on the heirs, but I don't, so that is skipped. We move to exploration, and currently the Harriers are next to a landmark right here, but minion Harriers in this case do not reveal any landmarks beside them, so we skip past that as well, and we move into attacks. And again, there's nothing here that can happen attacks-wise with the units currently on the board. It is worth noting that we do have an Elfin Kazi unit here, which is eventually going to target my hero when it gets within range. Currently it's perched on top of a spire and underneath this Elfin Kazi chip it states Roos 3 which gives it its range so how far out this Elfin Kazi will go to attack. It's not going to come after my minion. It solely wants to come after my hero Cram who is far away currently but later on, for instance, hypothetically, if Cram happened to move to this location right here, because he can actually move into forest, then this Elfin Kazi during this attack step could potentially come down here and sit adjacent to him. And what's really nasty is it implodes with Glide Bomb and does two damage, which cannot be blocked by the Armored Talent, which is unfortunate on any of my particular units currently, and even worse, but potentially to my advantage, it can actually do two damage to spires as well as other minions on the board. So I can strategically use its dive bomb and implosion to actually help me out. And that's kind of part of the fun. So right now I'm probably gonna move myself into a situation where I can use that to my advantage, being that my minion is going to need to make progress along the track towards its mark. So it will likely be coming around the bend here. So back to the Braunen faction, we're gonna start off with Aegis this time. I'm gonna I have Aegis head one and then two and we'll stop his movement right next to the spire here the high rise and then I'm going to go ahead and have Cram the Mighty go one and then two up next to the Harrier. So we're moving into the Spire's Fire. We have three Spires right here. My two units are within range of all of them. Each of them have to choose a target to attack. We'll talk about priority order in a second because we have Harriers here that have a talent called Quick Strike. Quick Strike states this unit may attack prior to the Spire's firing. The word may is in there. And anytime you see the word may when you're playing solo, you will only do so if it's advantageous for the AI player. So let's talk through what exactly exactly would happen here if the Harrier went ahead of the Spires and made an attack. The advantage for the Harriers, well, I don't know if there is one. Based on what I'm seeing here, I really don't think there is. The Harriers would go ahead and make a two attack against Cram. Cram would actually use his armored ability or talent to block one of that damage. The other one would get through, but fortification would be taken out as a result, so his health would still be there. And then he would actually retaliate because this is the first unit that's made an attack against him during this attack phase and retaliate only happens once per unit once it's done. Cram would use his retaliate by hitting the Harriers back for two and actually killing one of them off. So really, at the end of the day, if he kills one off, he gains an upgrade, puts his fortification ship back on, and nothing was really advantageous there for the Harriers. So in this case, even though it seems like it would be advantageous to have the Harrier attack first because there's three Spires ready to fire afterwards, it doesn't really seem like it does all that much right now. So I'm not going to have the Harriers attack in this situation based on what I'm seeing. Instead, we're going to determine which of the Spires we want to fire. And I can pick. But I can tell you right now, the very first thing in the priority order list is whichever unit you have that's closest to being able to be killed off by the number of or the highest rolled attack dice pool. So if I'm looking at the minaret, which is the highest one, for instance, it's going to use two attack upgrade chips, which means it's rolling two attack dice. The highest roll it could get is going to be four, which means it can't kill off Cram, but it certainly could wipe out Aegis hiding behind this other spire with only three health. And the 
one armored, well, it wouldn't matter because four would get past the one armored and still take him out. So the minaret would definitely target Aegis. Now, if I'm talking about anything else over here in terms of the other spires, again, same thing applies. You have to look at the chips they're rolling. There's only one attack die for each of them. So technically, neither of them can actually be wiped out because of one attack die as the highest roll would be a two. So we have to go to the next priority. The next priority for spires is an opponent it can damage or a unit it can essentially damage. So in this case, it could damage Cram and it could damage Aegis because, well, either way, one damage would get through if it rolled a two. So now we have two targets at the same priority level. So what happens in that situation? It defaults to the hero. So the hero would actually be attacked. So in this situation, we can see the high rise here and this particular spire over here underneath the Elf Kazi, the Regal Lookout are gonna want to target our hero over here and this Minaret is actually going to want to attack our minion. It's also worth knowing that there's a part of the strategy here for the solo player in that I get to choose which spire shoots first and that can actually change the actual targeting priority order of everything I just talked about depending on which one activates first. But I'm going to go ahead and do the really nasty roll with the minaret first and get out of the way against Aegis and just really hope I roll some decent blanks here. So two attack dice coming in. Aegis is crossing his fingers hoping he can handle this attack because if he can't, this is going to kill him. All right, so we did pretty good. We only got one damage through and Aegis is able to actually block it. So he is completely safe, which is perfect. And now we can go ahead and roll a single die, let's say for this high rise right here, going after Cram. Again, all of these uh, targets are actually within three. All right, so one damage to Cram, but again, his armored is going to block that. So nothing happening. And this spire over here, the Regal Lookout is gonna make its attack one again, blocked. We literally avoided all damage from the spire. Very, very lucky. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I really wanna see what's behind that exploration token. So let's go ahead and reveal this one and see what we found. So we found a pretty awesome source peddler in the forest region here next to Cram. And this source peddler will give us six source as a reward if we take it out. Now, the other thing I have to deal with is this group of harriers here beside me that also give me just a single source each time, but they're much more of a threat I need to deal with them first. The peddler is not forcing me to engage with it as there's no engage keyword. So I can safely leave this one face up, put the health chips underneath and maybe work on it later. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna drop five health. We'll put it underneath like so. And when I get around to it, I'll go after this thing. All right, it's time for Cram the Mighty to get in there against those Harriers and make an attack. So two damage going up against the Harriers will simply remove the top Harrier right off the group because they only have two health. And that is going to give him a new source to add into our source tracker of our fortress. So let's go ahead and tick that up. Plus we also get an upgrade. So our source is going to bump up from four to five. And on top of that, Cram is also going to upgrade. He's again got those two blue nodes and he's already using one of them for the one fortification chip he already has. I'm gonna go ahead and grab another fortification chip because I really want to keep Cram alive, especially with all these wonderful spires laying around. Now Aegis here is hiding just around the other side of the high rise. He is gonna be going ahead and doing an attack and this attack does two damage against this high rise. Now when normally doing two or more damage I could remove a fortification chip from this spire on the bottom but because this particular spire doesn't have any fortification chips to deal with it's just kind of overkill but my two damage will go up against the high rise and what it allows me to do is take either a range or an attack chip upgrade from the bottom of the spire so I simply just go right to the bottom of that spire and take away one of the range chips so we'll simply remove this pop one range chip out, and now it's down to just a single attack die and only one range, which should be really helpful, seeing as that is gonna actually make my current hero, which is Cram, out of range in future turns so long as he can stay where he currently is. We'll see if that actually pans out. So now the heirs are going to activate with their minions. It's gonna start with the lead minion closest to the mark. So the Harriers are actually furthest along towards my fortress. So they will go ahead and move first. Then the Elfin Kazi. So 
Something that I was going to mention earlier on strategy-wise was trying to find a way to get the Harriers kind of blocked up in an area where the Elf and Kazi would come down, hit my hero, but also do some damage to some of the enemy minions as well. Hopefully, if it was able to work out, some of the Spires, but I could not get it to work out with the Spires, but I can tell you right now it is definitely doable to do so and wise to actually be able to chop down one of the upgrade chips off the Spire from damage dealt from this glide bomb ability that it has so let's start off with the harriers here they're going to move up to four but they're going to follow the path because that's the only thing they have terrain allowance for they, they can really only move to there because the second they hit that they hit my minion aegis which is blocking them and my minion can block other minions and they're just going to have to fight their way through it. So basically the movement stops just like that. And now the Elfin Kazi is going to go ahead and activate its Roost Roam for movement, which will move it three, one, two, three, no matter how you do it. Puts them right next to my hero. And immediately the Glide Bomb is going to trigger when a Elfin Kazi lands and is adjacent to at the end of its movement, a hero. It's going to implode or explode and deal two damage to everything around it. Nothing can be blocked by any of the armor ability or talents that I have unfortunately so everyone is losing two so it's pretty straightforward cram is going to lose two health which is quite harsh good thing we have the fortification chips on there really bad for Aegis because he's down to just one health and this is going to actually kill off one of the Harriers and because neither of my units actually did the damage to the Harriers I don't get any upgrades or level ups from this and of course the Elfin Kazi is also removed being that it exploded and now, unfortunately, the Harrier is going to go ahead and make its attack, which is two, and that's going to go up against Aegis and his armor of one and health of one, and that is going to be enough to kill off my minion, unfortunately. So I've now lost my minion out of play, so wave one will continue until this Harrier is dealt with. So we are definitely near the end of wave number one here. Cram the Mighty is going to go ahead and use two of his movement to move two back here, and he's doing this so that strategically later on I can get myself ready with some new units going into wave two once we finally take out this minion which will happen very soon and Cram is going to be within two of going after this spire I'd like to knock this thing out as a major priority for wave uh, two and then start going after the minaret which is the major one of the major objectives uh, to win and also gain some renown points so what we're going to do is do what I just did, the two movement to here. Uh, from this position, I'm out of range of all spires, including this one, which is now no longer three range, it's two range, because I knocked one chip off last time, so that helps me out. And we're going to move into exploration. I'm not near any kind of landmark chip. I can't attack anybody. So we jump over to the airs. The Harriers are going to move their unit. So one, two, three, and four, which will put it right here. Conveniently right next to where my individual is. And now... The Harrier is going to go ahead and make an attack against Cram, and it's going to attack me for two. So it's going to, first off, one of it will be blocked by my armored ability. The other one is going to come off my fortification chip, which is going to get removed. And then Cram, because it's the first time I've been attacked, I'm going to be attacking back in a retaliation. That is going to kill the Harrier off, which is going to end this wave. But just before we go ahead and do that, I do gain the one source from the Harrier, and I also get to upgrade. So I'll just be putting that fortification ship right back on there again, which is great because I am literally one kill away from leveling cram up which i would love to do if i do so cram actually goes to a higher count for movement a higher count for his health and he also gains the survival ability which would be pretty awesome so we'll talk more about that when it actually happens if it does Heading into wave number two now we're going to start with the event phase by rolling the event die and finding out what happens all right, we got ourselves a one. Let's check the event table. A one on the event die results table actually has an attack upgrade chip going on to Darb. That is going to be the third one, making Darb very, very strong. The next phase is the income phase where we might gain some source, but in this scenario, we gain zero source. But one source is coming our way because we took out that Harrier at the end of wave one. So we're going into wave two here with six source which means when we move to the market phase which is the phase coming up next we have some source to spend now that we're in the market phase i'm going to go ahead and purchase for two source one of these earthscape tiles i have to take the one that is showing and i'm completely okay with that we'll also go ahead and reveal the next one in line 
Now it's important to note a few things about this scenario as it relates to the market section here. First off, we have a Merc Hero, but as you know from the rules earlier on, I am not allowed to actually deploy any other heroes than Cram the Mighty. So this essentially becomes a dead chip for this scenario, filling up the market as well. This one right here is called the Bunker. I could actually take that one, but it doesn't actually have any attack on it. It's just a fortification bunker. I could use it as a way to have an outpost basically on our source well. It could be useful, but I just don't want to spend the source on that right now. And then finally, we've got this equipment upgrade here, but this equipment upgrade must be put on a hero uh, when they're being deployed for the first time and Cram has already been deployed. So there's really nothing here in the market that I want to purchase at the moment. Besides the Earthscape tile, which we're gonna place as we move into the build phase. Now, as part of the build phase, I'm gonna go ahead and use my Earthscape and I'm gonna go ahead and wall off this area right here, this path that goes through, basically forcing everyone to take the long way around. You're probably wondering why I'm doing that. Well, that's because I'm planning on picking up units this turn with CP that are going to be able to do long range hits. And I'm hoping to be able to delay the enemy's arrival long enough for me to do some shots over the tree line at them as they come. At least that's my strategy. We'll see how that pans out. Now, the biggest thing with this is I have to set this in a way that I actually place it on an area of influence. And currently the only area of influence I have because I have no spires is just this particular one right here. So all the way up to this hex, hex underneath him and hex over here. So what I'm gonna do is place this like so, because by doing this, I'm ensuring that one of the hexes is on an area of influence, so this is a valid placement, and I can go ahead and cover these up like this, and this is walling off that path, so basically forcing everyone to go all the way around, and that's gonna give me just enough time to get uh, some of my units that I have that are ranged to be able to do shots over the wall before the hordes come around, and most of the hordes should be thinned out by the time they make that corner. Here is a look at the Brawnin Fortress Advancement Reference Sheet, which shows you all the costs in source, as well as the levels you need to go through for each of the different areas of your fortress. Lots of different things I could pick from here. I have six source, but I spent two of it on an Earthscape, so I only have four remaining. I'm choosing to actually leave that four going into the next wave in order to have more to purchase from and to be sure of which track I really want to put it in. Because as of right now, any of these entry level level one areas, which I could unlock a couple of them. Uh, the issue there is that none of them affect the units that I'm directly actually deploying for this coming wave. So there's really no point in doing anything except this particular Forsaken Artillery one was pretty interesting and in that allowed me to kind of do a risk reward thing with guessing the range and the damage, rolling some dice and hoping that it works out so I can make some long range attacks from my stronghold to enemies coming towards it. But the Earthscape that I did should be enough of a change to the actual ground that that should be enough to hold off the hordes long enough for my units, my new ones, to take them down or thin them out before they get to my fortress. To end off the build phase within wave two, it states within the scenario I am currently playing to add an attack upgrade chip to the bottom of an air spire of my choice. I'm definitely adding it to the spire way in the back. And again, it's gonna be on the bottom. So it's gonna go underneath the fortification chip and the attack chip that already exists there. And I'm doing this mainly because it doesn't have that kind of range to be able to get to me yet and I can deal with it later on. So we're heading into the prep phase now and we have seven command points to spend and I also get an architect for free on the promoted side. We'll talk about what these do in a moment. I'll take my architect right now. What I'm gonna spend my seven CP on as part of my plan with the Earthscape is this dispatch unit in the back here. You can see it has two range. It's gonna come in real handy. I don't get it on the promoted side but it's still very, very useful and I'm hoping that I'll be able to shoot some shots over those hedges towards some of the units that are coming to me from the airs. So in addition to being able to take pot shots at the minions from the other side as they make their way over and I shoot over that hedge that I've built near my fortress, I also can use these to take pot shots at the spires from distance and I really think that's gonna be a nice advantage as long as I can keep them alive. So I'm gonna stack them like this. I've got one dispatch unit on top, a second dispatch unit on the bottom. I'm not choosing to group them. I'm just choosing to get them in their deployment stack currently and the architect, I'm actually gonna have him go at the very 
bought him and deployed last. He can move the fastest and I have a plan in terms of how quickly these things can move and where they're roughly going to be in relation to the enemies that are going to be moving. And they get to go first in this upcoming onslaught phase. The heirs are going to be able to begin this thing off and you know they're very, very fast. So we're going to put these two on top and that will be the deployment stack going into wave two. The prep phase for wave two of the heirs looks like this. We've got a Harrier on the top, promoted side one, grouped with another promoted Harrier. And then underneath that, we've got a Joust with Quick Strike, just a single one of those, but also grouped with a Harrier. So right when you think the skies are safe and my hero cram won't have to deal with any elf and Kazi, one actually is coming back and will be placed on the Regal Lookout because it says one elf and is a talent. So we place another elf and Kazi right here. So that's going to happen every single time at the start of the onslaught phase in each wave. It's going to be replenished if there's an elf and Kazi in play. At the end of a wave, it simply goes back to the barracks and then it's going to come back out on this spire. So if I can get rid of that spire, that will no longer occur. So certainly as part of my strategy, during this wave to hopefully be able to take out this high rise and then if we're super lucky be able to take down at least the regal lookout as well we know that our main objective spire wise is to go after the minaret or to eliminate all of the spires and it's not just an or we could potentially do both not only removing the minaret but also removing all of the air spires and giving us extra renown so again we're going for the big time win here as much as we can the additional way we can get some renown is taking down their fortress we'll see whether that's a possibility as we go forward. So at this point, the Harriers, which are grouped, there's two of them, are going to move. They're going to go one, two, three, and four and sit in between the two spires like so. The next group is now going to go. It has a Joust as well as a Harrier inside of this group and it moves a two spaces. So one, two, we'll put it right here. We also have our friendly dive bombing Elf and Kazi, which is sitting up on top, perched on this spire here, waiting for us to come by with our hero so it can hit us. Currently, we check to see if it can get anywhere near our hero, and it cannot. It can move only three, so it'll only make it to about here. It'd have to be here in order to be adjacent to Cram or here, and it just can't make it with its current range. But that's something we're going to have to think about. When we move Cram, we were going to want to put Cram up against the high rise here to start making hits against it, but the danger is the Elf and Kazi is going to come down here it's not only going to hit cram it would also hit the spire which actually would be a plus because it would do some damage to it but the danger is that it's actually going to cause some grief for cram as he can't block that damage which you saw in the last wave so that's really going to make cram very very weak I don't have any spires to fire upon these minions coming after me and there's no exploration happening for them and attack wise they can't attack they are too far back those minions for the air so now we're going to come over to my turn and we're going to begin actually moving our deployment stack so let's get the brawnen units on the move the first dispatch unit from the top of this stack here is going to go two spaces making a progress along the way the next dispatch unit can only move two again neither of these dispatch units have any terrain allowance outside of paths so they're basically stuck up behind each other and then lastly we have an architect you might be wondering why did you put that at the very bottom it's not going to go anywhere this turn and you're right it's not going to move at all the reason i did this is because i don't want the architect actually running ahead of the dispatch units and getting itself killed extremely fast i'd rather have it tail the rest of the units so that these units have a chance to take something out that the builder can then use and the hope there is that these things by shooting range knowing that we have something here that can automatically build us a spire i'm going to use my movement now with cram to actually put him here which will keep him at a safe distance away from all the other spires as well as the elf and kazi we can actually flip this over during the exploration phase and make some ranged attacks at it plus cram can attack it and then next turn these will shuffle one more step or actually they'll be a little further along but they'll be able to make range attacks at it as well and we should be able to take it down or take it out and maybe be able to take up and build up our first spire so my units are currently at a safe distance from all spires so i'm not going to be attacked in any way shape or form so now i can explore i'm definitely going to flip this chip over we already know what it is grizzled oak it has six health and i'm going to leave it face up this time again it doesn't have engage so i'm not forced to attack it but i'm definitely going to so we're going to put six health chips underneath this thing which is actually quite a bit of work we're going to have to do in order to take it down but if we do this is going to help us build a spire for free and that is a huge plus so my hero cram the mighty is going to go ahead and make a two attack hit against the rogue grizzled oak 
and that's going to be two damage off of this thing. It's going to also retaliate back at my hero as it doesn't like what just happened. And when it retaliates, it's just damage being dealt back to Cram. So armored is not going to help here in terms of retaliation because it is straight damage. However, my fortification upgrade chips can help and I can actually remove both of them first in order to take care of the two hits that I got. So thankfully no actual health chips come off of him. But that's a pretty deadly hit there from the Grizzled Oak. I'm also going to now have the Dispatch here from range, two away, make a single attack. And again, there's no retaliate a second time because once a unit has actually retaliated, then it doesn't get to retaliate again. Plus, this thing doesn't have range to even hit the Dispatch anyway. So this thing is now, the Oak is down to three health and we're looking good for being able to take it out in the future. So that's going to end it for my attacks. Let's go ahead with the airs here. We're going to start with the Harrier over here. The Harrier is going to move four. This group, so one, two, three, and four. We'll put them right here. And then the Joust group here with the Harrier is going to move a total of two spaces and will be put right here in between the spires. Spires at this point are going to fire, but none of my units are within range, and also it's worth mentioning that Spires, especially ones here controlled by the enemy, or even mine, cannot be shot at any of these landmark minions. They only go after units from factions. No exploration can be done by them, and there is no attacks that can be completed right now for them either, so it comes back over to my turn. So this should work out nicely. I'm going to go ahead and have this dispatch unit here go 1, 2, which will place him there, which is 2 away from being able to hit this Spire, and the Spire is actually uh, within range of hitting this particular unit as it has one range and then one range chip on it so it could hit him but we'll have to just deal with that and then this dispatch is going to move to here which will put him in range again I can choose my targets here which is gives me some options for sure being that I can shoot range I can actually hit the Harriers over here as well the architect now can finally actually move but I do have to make a decision as to whether or not I want to move cram I already decided to move him at the end and I could have gone at the very beginning with cram but I want to leave him here on purpose to make the deal or basically to deal the final blow to kill the grizzled oak and get the upgrade because I want some fortification back on him so I'll leave him exactly where he is because I don't have to move him and I'm going to move the architect as far as I possibly can down the track so with movement complete we've got two spires that are within range of making attacks on my dispatch units this high rise can only attack this one whereas the minaret can hit both of them so I'm going to choose to have the minaret go first and attack this one right here because it is my choice and we'll see how it goes. All right, a blank and a one. So that's actually not a bad roll. We're going to lose one health off the three chips that we have underneath that unit. And we still have it alive. So now this high rise is going to go ahead and make an attack with only one die. All right, one more knocked off, so almost gone, but not quite. So now it's time for my guys to make their attack, and they are ready to go. My dispatch unit that's furthest away from this rogue grizzled oak is going to make the attack from range two away because retaliation won't occur, being that I'm so far away, which is fantastic. I was originally going to have this thing hit this spire, but I'd rather have it help out this uh, kill here without being killed off. So I'm going to go ahead right now, make that one attack against the grizzled oak oak and this is also going to line up cram the mighty who's sitting right next to the grizzled oak for a two attack on this unit this landmark minion i should say is now defeated and there's no retaliation because it was defeated and we're going to gain ourselves a free spire not only are we going to gain ourselves a free spire, but Cram the Mighty is going to be able to upgrade and he's going to put himself a fortification chip on him, which he definitely is excited about, being that uh, he lost both of the other two earlier on. And now we're going to go ahead and place a spire for free. Now this is exciting for a number of reasons. The biggest reason is I don't have any of these yet, so that's pretty awesome. And we've got one in play. We have to decide which spire. We have two available for us right now. We have the Drilling Outpost. This one here has a talent on it called mining would have one fortification chip it doesn't really focus on attacking but the other one here the, disp the dispatch platform has one attack and one range plus it can do splash damage which means when it's hitting a target it can do additional damage to targets around it so this one sounds like a great one to build so we'll go ahead and slide that in 
Now we have to decide whether we put the upgrade chips in whichever order we want, top or bottom. So we've got the uh, attack upgrade and the range upgrade. And honestly, if I was gonna lose something first, it would be the range. So I'm gonna put that on the bottom. The great news is this thing will have two range. So it will be able to target uh, enemies coming around the bend over here, which is fantastic. Plus help me defend on this side as well. So this is a really nice benefit from that landmark. So that was great. So we'll go ahead and build up our spire, and that looks pretty good. And just when you thought that was all the attacks I can do, I can actually have this dispatch unit make a two range attack against this unit. I could even have it attack this source peddler as well. So that's really tempting because getting six source would be incredible, but you know what? I want to deal with some of the Harriers as much as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually have this thing take one health hit off of the Harrier and hope that we can get the next health hit off as it rounds the bend and comes around. Again, having these range units are super helpful that way. Like, retaliation wise won't happen because again, cannot actually reach my unit. Time for the airs to go. So the Harriers will start it off with four movement, one, two, three, and four. So they are definitely rounding the bend there. And then the Joust and Harrier group is gonna move two, so one, two. And sadly, they are gonna be just one space out of range as this uh, dispatch platform can hit things here, but not here, but they will eventually be in range. So as I mentioned, no spires are going to fire on my end because none of them are in range, no exploration for the enemy and no attacking occurring. So it comes right back around to my turn. So it's time to move my minions here. Let's go with the Brawn and Faction. This dispatch unit here is gonna move two to this position right here. This next dispatch unit is gonna move one, two to here. The architect is gonna move one, two to here putting him next to a source well, which is quite interesting. And then Cram the Mighty is over here and I have to make a decision as to where I really want him to be. I'm gonna have Cram the Mighty move two spaces over this way so that he's gonna be able to reinforce what's going on over here. Plus be able to hopefully skip over to the forest area and make some attacks over here if he needs to. So let's take a look at the spires firing from the airs and my minions. So you can see here the minaret, one, two, three to the architect. So definitely can attack him. So I might as well go ahead and do that. The high rise can actually still reach the architect, but we'll go after this dispatch unit because this dispatch unit is also a minion, but has way less health and it has the chance of being killed off. So this is the target for the high rise. So let's just go ahead actually, and we'll start off with the high rise and see if it can dispatch of my dispatch unit. Oh, it definitely did. It got a two, which is way more than enough to wipe this thing out. So the dispatch unit has been destroyed by this Spire. Next one here is the Minaret going up against the Architect, and it's gonna be two dice for this one. Hopefully it's not bad. Oof, that's a big hit. So that's gonna drop us down two health halfway. One thing that I wanna complete right now, which is technically just one step out of order, is when the architect ended its movement next to this source well here, I have the option with the builder talent to be able to go ahead and build a spire, which I definitely want to do. So I'm gonna be building a spire on this particular location right here. Now, technically this should have happened at the end of my movement, and then the spires from the enemies would have fired, which we just did, but there's no impact because this won't have any gameplay changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this because I definitely don't wanna miss out on it. When I go ahead and do this build, the architect flips over from its promoted side to its regular side to say that it, it, it was used. And at this point, I'm also gonna go ahead now and place a dispatch platform here, which I'm quite happy to do, giving me some extra damage on the side. So now I'm really, really ready for units coming through here. And I get one upgrade chip uh, for attack and one for range. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did last time, putting the attack on the top and the range on the bottom. So we're gonna look like this when it's all said and done. Now there's nothing for me to explore on this current turn. So what I'm gonna do now is do my attacks. So currently I have a dispatch unit right here and the only thing that it could target two away is the high rise. So I'm definitely gonna go ahead and make an attack there. Cram's not gonna be able to attack at all. And the architect also won't be able to attack. So it's simply just this one attack here. So we simply take off the bottom upgrade, which is the range upgrade. Now it can only shoot just in the hexes around it which is making it significantly weaker but still able to attack us back to the airs turn now we're gonna have the harrier here come around the bend and it's gonna run right into this dispatch unit right here and stop and then we're gonna have this joust unit combined with another harrier in a group go one two and land itself right here 
It feels good to have Spires at my disposal here. I'm going to have the Dispatch Platform make an attack against this Harrier. So one attack upgrade chip gives me one attack die. We rolled ourselves a one, and that one is going to take off the bottom chip for health, which is going to kill off one of the Harriers, which is pretty awesome. So we'll just go ahead now and replenish the rest at the very bottom for the other Harrier, which is two, and there's only a single unit left there now. Because my Spire made the killing blow, I do gain the rewards here for the Harrier, which is one source, which I'm going to go ahead and adding. So I've got now a total of five. My next dispatch platform here is going to make an attack against the Joust here. Hopefully it'll be a big one. One thing to note, I've got a talent here called Splash. That just does splash damage to other units only around it. So yeah, you'd think that, oh, maybe it could hit the Spire. It can't. It's only units. So no point in talking about the Splash talent there, but... Again, one attack upgrade chip, so one attack die going up against the Jost. Hopefully it's good damage. All right, we got one, so one is coming off the top. That's not bad. I'll take anything at this point. So now the attacks begin. We have a Harrier here, which is right up against and adjacent to my dispatch platform, as well as a dispatch unit. So it needs to determine which its priority. So the first priority for AI units is the opposing fortress gate. So it's not near that. An opposing unit or spire can defeat. It's actually not possible to defeat either of these two. Uh, it would only be able to damage them, which is the next priority order. So basically there's a tie here going on. So we then have to move to the priority list of the types of unit. So first it will go after heroes, then it's spires, and then after that it goes after faction minions. So it will ignore the dispatch minion and actually go after an attack on the dispatch platform. So this Harrier here is going to do a two damage attack against this dispatch, dispatch platform, which will remove the bottom chip, which is the range chip. These grouped units right here are not going to be attacking anything. Start of the onslaught phase for me is going to have my minions start moving and my hero moving. I have to decide which one I want to go first. Uh, in terms of minions versus heroes, I'm not actually sure where I want cram exactly yet. So let's deal with these minions. First off, dispatch can't actually go any further. The Harrier is here. And then the architect's behind and can't go anywhere either. So neither of them can make progress and can't do any lateral movements. So they're stuck where they currently are. The architect, before before after uh, its movement is completed has the builder talent as we talked about earlier which allowed for this platform to be constructed the spire now uh, again this is the coolest thing with the architect when it started on its promoted side I was able to flip it over to gain this spire well now that it's on its basic side or base side I'm able to use it again as a builder in order to upgrade a spire that's beside me so what I'm going to do is actually use it to go ahead and put an upgrade chip on this Spire. And I'm going to choose to have an attack upgrade because I want to really make this thing a little bit tougher in terms of the damage that it deals out. So now it's going to have two upgrade chips underneath for attack, which is pretty awesome. This architect now is going to be removed from the game. So I do lose the architect, but man, did I ever make use of that architect. Everything worked out perfectly with that plan. And that was a free one that I got as part of the scenario setup. So, for wave two anyway. And uh, at this point now, Cram has some options in terms of his movement. He could actually jump over here. Again, it's very dangerous on this side of the map because the Elf and Kazi's over here, and the Minaret's over here, and the Joust is over here. So putting my hero over there could be a bad, bad idea. I'm going to leave Cram the Mighty exactly where he is. I do not want to put him any closer over here and have the Elf and Kazi come down and start doing damage to my Spires just yet. We're going to wait and see if things can be in more of an advantageous position for me later on. So I'll leave Cram right there. That's going to end it now at this point spires are going to fire for the airs but i don't believe i have anything in range i'm out of range of the minaret out of range of any of this and the high rise now doesn't have a range chip underneath it only has the one range on top, so it can only shoot as far as the Harriers, and it can't shoot another Spire. Something that is quite unfortunate is the fact this Harrier does have Quick Strike, so it may go ahead and attack before Spires fire, and that is definitely going to be to its advantage to do so, because it knows if it can take out a Dispatch, then that thing can't attack on its turn, and it has the availability to potentially do it, as this only has 3 health, and my highest roll with the Harrier would be 4, so it's going to take that chance chance to go ahead and make an attack and we already know that the airs uh, spires are not making any attacks anyway but this was something i definitely wanted to catch so here we go harriers are making their attack let's hope it's not too bad 
Oh, that's pretty bad. So we lost two health. It's not enough to kill him, but it certainly gets him closer to death. Now, the good thing about this is I do get to attack back as this is a unit coming after me. So I attack back for one as a retaliation automatically. So that drops it down to one. My dispatch, however, has other plans. Instead of going for the Harrier, we are going to take down this high rise. So I'm going to do my one attack from two range, and that is going to remove the final chip from this spire. And we have defeated our very first spire in the game and as you can see over here on this chip it states we're going to gain three source which is a pretty awesome reward so we'll be jumping up from the five that we're currently at to eight which is pretty awesome so all the attacks have been resolved rewards have been gained and we're moving on to the air's turn as so we're going to go ahead with the harrier here movement wise not going any further it's going to stay exactly where it is the joust group here with the harrier is going to move two spots down to this position my dispatch platform here is going to take a shot at this Joast right here. I have a choice out of the two, but I'd rather it go after this one as the, I get two attack dice for this because there's two attack upgrades so I can do more damage, have a better chance of actually hopefully killing one off. So let's see how it goes. Ah, that's a pretty solid attack right there. That's going to be two damage, which is enough to essentially kill off the Joast. I also am going to gain two source, which is fantastic. And I'll just put this two health back underneath because the... Uh, Harrier, which is underneath of this one, has two health, and that was pretty good. So my source is going to jump from 8 to 10. Attacks are coming my way now, and we're going to go ahead with the Harrier first. I get to choose which of the two Harriers I want to go first. I definitely want this one to go first, as it's going to go after whichever unit or spire it can take down. It cannot take down the dispatch uh, platform, as there's two upgrades on it, which would take two attacks to get rid of it. The dispatch one, however, is definitely possible to remove. So two attack is straight up enough to kill the dispatch simple as that it's gone which means i don't get to retaliate because it was a clean kill so that's unfortunate so all of my units at this point are now removed from the game board but i believe they did what they needed to do to get this one spire in place and now we're gonna have to leave it up to cram the mighty to clean up the rest of these minions and hopefully the spires can continue to help out speaking of spires my dispatch platform is being attacked by this harrier down here a two attack against it is going to cause one upgrade chip from the bottom to be removed. So one of my attack chips is now gone. That is not so good, but there's no retaliation that comes from Spires. Things have definitely thinned out and now Cram the Mighty wants some revenge. So he is going to move into this space here beside the Harrier. And that's as far as he's gonna move. And that's really the only thing I can move at this point. The uh, different Spires for the heirs are going to fire, but none of them are within range of my hero. So that won't happen. I I have absolutely no exploration happening with my hero, but my hero will definitely go ahead and attack right now. So he's going to go ahead with his two attack and make an attack straight on against the Harrier, which will wipe it out, which is a nice clean kill, no retaliation. And I get to upgrade my hero with an extra fortification chip. And I could have chosen attack or range or anything else, but I really like having that fortification there. It really helps you uh, in situations where you're just getting hammered. Plus his strength is not the highest at the moment. Now I have another strategy in mind in terms of what I want to do here with Cram. There's something else I'm able to do involving my Fortress Gate. So instead of focusing on having Cram actually run back to the fortress, which I don't think he can even get to the gate in time based on the fact the Harrier will come around and on top of that do a bunch of damage to my dispatch platform and likely take it down, I'd like to avoid that so I could potentially upgrade it using Architects maybe in the next round. So what I'm going to do is keep Cram where he currently is and maybe use him to get rid of this last Harrier. So we're going to start off with the heirs right now. They're going to activate, so movement-wise, one, two, three four which is going to put them right up against uh cram the mighty my spire here the dispatch platform will make a attack against this harrier here we'll roll a die hope for good things to happen all right just a single hit off would have been nice to see a two there so we'll knock one health chip away one left now the Harrier is going to go ahead and attack. It's going to determine its target, and technically both of these can be hit, but this dispatch platform is the one in which it's going to target, sadly, because this is the one in which it knows it can defeat. And it's too bad, but we are going to lose this platform because of the Harrier and not be able to land a two on that die. So we're going to go ahead and remove this Spire as we just lost that. The dispatch platform will go back into the barracks. 
and that upgrade chip is also going to go back into the tray as well so that's unfortunate and uh, the harrier here doesn't take any additional backlash from attacking a spire ever no retaliation so that was a clean kill and it comes back over to our turn so wow a lot has changed in wave number two we used to have some spires sitting here at the source wells both of them are now gone cram is sitting right next to the harrier here there's really no reason for me to move anywhere i should probably just sit where i am and i'm okay staying here because of the fact that if i kill this particular minion off this elfin kazi even though it would try to get here well as soon as this minion's killed that's the end of the wave and we're good to go and that elfin kazi that did not come off its perch will go back to the barracks and come back out at the beginning of the next wave and i go first at the beginning of wave three so i can hopefully position cram in a spot that either avoids the elephant kazi or put him right in the uh, pile of heat from the beginning so i'm going to choose right now to have cram go ahead and make uh no movement essentially against this thing then the uh different spires are going to fire at this point but none of them can actually reach me so that is not going to happen uh i'm not at this point going to do any type of uh exploring but i am going to attack so a straight two damage on this harrier is going to kill it off that's going to bump our source from 10 up to 11 which is a nice jump and on top of it, I actually get to promote my unit. My hero is going to get promoted for the first time because I already have two upgrades on myself. And you'll see those nodes allow me only two slots for upgrades. So at this point, we're going to talk about promotion. So when a unit is promoted in the onslaught phase, like Cram is right now, I simply flip this over to his promoted side. You can see here we're going to gain the talent survival, but there's also a difference in health here. Whatever that difference was from the other side, which which is five to six, I gain that right now. So I get to go ahead and put one health chip underneath of them. You don't get to fully restore your health, although that would sound great. So we got four underneath of them now and two upgrade chips. But the other thing that happens is all the upgrade chips that you have on your unit disappear. They go back. So you don't have them anymore. So you will basically have to go after those again. The plus to this is that now my movement is up to three and I attack at two. So the difference between what I had before and now is that my movement has jumped up and that survival trait is there we should talk about what that means survival is an amazing talent it says at the end of your turn if this unit did not move or attack it may recover one health that's pretty awesome so i don't have to worry so much about getting back to the barracks to recover all my health knowing that i have four on him right now i should easily be able to get those other two health back up Unless, of course, I throw myself into the fire against an Elf and Kazi, but that's really going to be helpful, especially when I know that dive bomber is coming. So a quick correction here on the source that I obtained in the last wave. I double checked. It looks like I should have gained one, two three four five six seven eight source now i started off this particular wave two with four source remember i had six and i went ahead and spent two of that six to get that earthscape so i had four so going ahead and adding the rest in there the eight should actually have me at 12 so somewhere along the line there i didn't give myself that source and there was never a time where the elf and kazi came out and destroyed any of the enemy units i actually had all of those units destroyed with my my minions or my hero so i should have gotten all of that source i just missed one and we don't want to miss any source whatsoever going into the next wave and that's going to do it for part number two of this cloud spire playthrough using the brawn faction with the ignition scenario really hope you guys are enjoying this playthrough and it's helping you get the game to the table in a solo capacity thanks so much for watching hope to see you in the next one and as always keep on rolling solo Thank you.